Revelation 1, 18. Great verse in Revelation chapter 1. The Lord says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now look at that phrase, was dead. He was only dead because he willingly laid down his life. If it wasn't for that, they couldn't have killed him. Nobody could have killed him. He was dead because he willingly laid down his life. But a lot of people don't know what the Lord was doing when he was dead for those three days and three nights. In Matthew twelve forty, it says, the Lord says, for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas was here. So you see, the Lord himself compares the story of Jonas to the three days and three nights that he would be in the heart of the earth. So as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, the Lord's going to be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life, died on the cross for your sins. And when he died, when he was dead, his spirit went back to the Father. Luke 23, 46. Look at Luke 23, 46. You know, we've got a body, a soul, and a spirit. And when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross... His spirit went back to the Father. Luke 23, 46. It says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So his spirit went back to the Father. Now, his body. Look at Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 57 through 60. Matthew 27, 57 through 60. It said, When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. And he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. So you see that his body was placed in the tomb. His spirit went back to the Father. His body placed in the tomb. And also when he died, what about his soul? Look at Acts 2, 31 through 32. It says, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. So the Lord Jesus Christ, his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. So when he was dead for those three days and three nights, his soul went down into hell, into the lower parts of the earth. Look at Luke 23, Luke 23, 42 through 43. Now, this is when the Lord Jesus Christ is dying on the cross. And, you know, he's crucified between two thieves. One of them gets right with him. The other one doesn't. And look at what the one that gets right with him says in Luke 23, 42 through 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And where was Jesus going that day? He was going into the heart of the earth. You see, before Jesus Christ shed his blood for us on the cross, the Old Testament saints would go down to the lower parts of the earth into a comfort side. Whereas lost people, just like they do now, they go down into a torment. And that's illustrated... Really good in Luke 16, 19, 31, 19 through 31. 
So that thief on the cross, that day he would be with the Lord in paradise, down in the comfort side, the same place where Lazarus would be in Luke 16, 19 through 31. And I know that there's a lot of people, well, maybe not a lot of people, but quite a few that don't believe that the Old Testament saints went to the heart of the earth in the Old Testament. They believe they just believe that they went to the third heaven, uh, kind of like they, they'll use uh, Enoch, for example, and Elijah to prove that they went to heaven in the Old Testament. I believe those are exceptions. And I just, the reason that I can't believe that people in the Old Testament went to the third heaven before the cross is because, for one, you know, the blood the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ hadn't been shed yet. He hadn't been up there to apply the blood in the third heaven. And then the main reason is Luke chapter 16. Let's just read Luke chapter 16, 19 through 31. It says, There was a certain rich man which was, was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So the reason, main reason I believe in the Old Testament that they went to a, the saints went to like a comfort side in the heart of the earth and the uh, lost went to the torment side just like they do now is because of this story here. The rich man looked over and seen Abraham and he seen Lazarus. Now it, where it says in Luke 16, 22, it says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. You know, they'll say, well, Abraham's bosom is not a place. It's just a body part. All right, if you want to say that, that's fine. But even at that, if, if Lazarus is just being carried by angels and laid on the chest of Abraham, that still doesn't change the fact that the rich man, he's looking over and he sees Abraham and Lazarus. If you don't want to call it Abraham's bosom, okay. Just call it the comfort side because look, in Luke 16, 24, it says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. So obviously, they're on a side that has water. It says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So you got a comfort side, and you got a torment side. And it says, Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they will, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither they will they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. So you see, Abraham and Lazarus on one side, the rich man on the other side, with a great gulf fixed in between. So you got a comfort side and a torment side. And it, over in Ezekiel 31, 16, it, it talks about a place of comfort in the nether parts of the earth with water. And I made the nations to shake at the sun of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain with the sword and they that were were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. So you see, look at that. All that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. So, to me, it, it seems clear that there was a place for the saints on one side 
place for the lost on the other side. You know, in Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, it tells you once again that the Lord descended down into the lower parts of the earth. In Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far up above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And over there in Matthew 27, when the Lord resurrected, some of the saints got up. In Matthew 27, 51, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. So you see, the Lord went down into the lower parts of the earth. Uh, he took the Old Testament saints up with him, and even some of their bodies get up out of the graves and walk around for the people to see. Now, another thing that the Bible talks about in 1 Peter 3, 18, in regards to what he could have been doing during those three days and three nights, it says in 1 Peter 3, 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, you got hell being called a prison. It says, which were sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, were in few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So you got it where he's uh, going and preaching to the spirits in prison. And it goes and puts you in a context of the Noah's flood and these spirits were disobedient during that time. Well, obviously those angels which kept not their first estate and came down during the days of Noah, uh, their spirit down there and in the heart of the earth. And see, uh, since it's spirits, you know, when, when a, a, a person dies, when one of us die, our spirit goes back to God. It's our soul that goes to hell. So this must be the spirits of those angels that kept not their first estate. And the Lord was preaching to them during those three days and three nights. That's what it looks like to me. And you see those uh, spirits are down there reserved in everlasting chains. In Second Peter 2 and verse 4, once again, putting you in the context of Noah's flood, talking about angels. Second Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And then also putting the time of Noah in... Uh, in um, comparing it with Sodom and Gomorrah and turning the seas of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So you got hell and angels in the same context as Noah and the same context as Sodom and Gomorrah. And you see those angels are down there in everlasting chains under darkness. Jude 1.6 also talks about it. Jude Verse 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So down there in hell, you got a comfort. You had a comfort side. You've got a torment side. You got a great gulf fixed. You've got angels under darkness. And the Lord went down there and... He led captivity captive when he resurrected, took the Old Testament saints with him. He preached to the spirits in prison. But now back to Revelation 1.18. That's what he did when he was dead. In Revelation 1.18, it says, I am he that liveth, he presently lives, and was dead. He was only dead because he allowed them to kill him. And, but then he says, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. He's not going to die again. They're not going to crucify him again. He says, Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. So the keys of hell. 
Well, the hell's got keys. There is also a key to the bottomless pit in Revelation 9-1 and Revelation 21 through 3. And some people believe that that great gulf fixed over in Luke 16, that's the bottomless pit or the start of the bottomless pit. That's what some people believe. But there's a key to that bottomless pit. There's keys of hell. There's a key to the bottomless pit. Hell also has gates, Matthew 16, 18. Hell has bars, Jonah 2, 1 through 10. You see, once again, going back to Jonah again, in the belly of the well for three days and three nights. Let's just, look, let's just read Jonah 2 really quick. Jonah 2, 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. See that? You know, it seems Jonah died when he was in the belly of the well and went down to hell. It says, The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. Oh, Lord my God. See the picture here? The Lord was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. And it says the mountains... The bottoms of the mountains, the earth with her bars was about me forever. He says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came into thee, into thine holy temple. So, hell has gates. Hell has bars. Matthew 16, 18, the Lord says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it's got keys, it's got gates, it's got bars. The bottomless pit also has keys. So the Lord, Revelation 118, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and of death. So you think about hell and death. Now, uh, I believe it's okay to call the lake of fire hell, but technically, hell is not the same as the lake of fire. The lake of fire is something different because over in Revelation 20, Revelation 20, It talks about the great white throne judgment. Look at verse 11. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. So the lake of fire seems to be something different entirely. But I just wanted to give you kind of a, a look at what the Lord did for those three days and three nights and kind of a look at the lower parts of the earth. You would have had a comfort side where Abraham and Lazarus were. You would have had the great gulf fixed and many believe that to be the bottomless pit which is where the devil is put for the thousand years over in Revelation 20 for the millennium. The devil's put in the bottomless pit for a thousand years and then next to that great gulf you got the torment side where the rich man has been where you would go if you're not saved in hell. And the Lord went down there and he preached to the spirits in prison, as it talked about over in 1 Peter. And there's, there's angels down there under darkness, reserved unto the judgment. We're going to be judging them. And then you've got the lake of fire, which uh, there's going to be a lake of fire on the earth in the millennium. But the lake of fire seems to be different than hell because hell and death are cast into the lake of fire and then you know after the um, great white throne or at the great white throne the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire forever where the beast and the false prophet were also cast into 
but that's just a quick look. Revelation 118, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death.